What's the biggest mystery or gap in understanding about evolution? Um, is it the Cambrian explosion? The idea that evolution is slow is wrong. It can be incredibly fast. So I don't think there's a big mystery. I mean, the, the big mystery in, in biology is consciousness. That's an important question to answer. If we want to understand consciousness, that's the only question to answer. What's the biggest mystery or gap in understanding about evolution? Um, is it the Cam Cambrian explosion? And if so, what is it? Um, it's, in my understanding, in the short amount of time, maybe 10 million years, 100 million years, something like that, a huge number of animals, variety, diversity of animals were created. Is that the yeah. biggest mystery? No, I don't think it's evolution? a particularly big mystery really anymore. The assumption, and this is completely wrong, this assumption, is, is the, then that you know evolution works really slowly and that you need billions of years to affect some small change and then another billion years to do something else. And it's, it's completely wrong. Evolution gets stuck in a stasis and it stays that way for tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years. And if you think about the entire planetary history, and then you realize that the first two billion years was bacteria only. You have the origin of life, two billion years of just bacteria, oxygenic photosynthesis arising here. Then you have a, a global catastrophe, snowball earths and great oxidation event, and then another billion years of nothing happening, and then some, some, some period of upheavals, and then another snowball earth, and then suddenly you see the Cambrian explosion. This is long periods of stasis where the world is in a stable state and is not, lean, is not geared towards increasing complexity. It's just everything is in balance. And only when you have a catastrophic level, global level problem, like a snowball earth, it forces everything out of balance and there's a tipping point and you end up somewhere else. Now, the idea that, that evolution is slow is wrong. It can be incredibly fast. Um, and I mentioned earlier on that you can, you know, in theory, it would take half a million years to invent an eye, for example, from a light sensitive spot. It boggles the mind that it can happen so quickly, but we're used to human time scales. And what we need to talk about is generations of things that live for a year in the ocean. Um, and, and then a million years is a million generations. And, and the amount of change that you can do, you can affect in, in that period of time is, is enormous. And we're dealing with large populations of things where selection is sensitive to pretty small changes and can... So I don't think there's a big mystery. There's lots of details that need to be filled in. I mean, the, the big mystery in, in biology is consciousness. I, I can understand the wiring of a brain. The mystery to me is how this system gives rise to feelings, as we were talking about earlier on. I mean, let me compare it with, with classical versus quantum physics. The, you know, classical physics is logical, and you can understand <laughs> the, yeah. the, the kind of language we're dealing with. It's, it's almost at the human level. We're dealing with stars and things that we can see. And when you get to quantum mechanics and things, it's practically impossible for the human mind to compute what is what just happened there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that that is the same. It's like you understand mathematically the, the notes of a musical composition. That's intelligence. Yes. But why it makes you feel a certain way is much harder to understand. I wonder who solves consciousness. I tend to think consciousness will be solved by the engineer. <laughs> Meaning the person who right. builds it. My feeling is from my meager knowledge of the history of science is that the biggest breakthroughs usually come through from a field that was not related <laughs> to yeah. it. So, so if anyone, you know, it's not going to be a biologist who solves consciousness uh, just because biologists are too embedded in, 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 in the nature of, of, of the problem. And then nobody's going to believe you when you've done it because nobody's going to be able to prove that this, uh, this AI is in fact conscious and, and, and sad <laughs> in any case and any more than you can prove that a dog is conscious and sad. Ten Years ago, I, I um, wrote a chapter in, in a book called Life Ascending about consciousness. And it was in part because I, I was just curious to know more and I read more for that chapter. I never worked on it, but I've always, how can anyone not be interested in, in the question? Um, and I was left with the feeling that A, nobody knows, and B, there are two main schools of thought out there. One of them says, oh, it's a property of matter. It's an unknown law of physics. Panpsychism, everything is conscious. The sun is conscious. It's just a matter of, or a rock is conscious. It's just a matter of how much. And I find that very unpersuasive. 
Um, I can't say that it's wrong, it's just that I think we somehow can tell the difference between something that's living and something that's not. And then the other, the other end is it's, a, it's an emergent property of a very, very complex central nervous system. As a biochemist, the question for me then was, okay, it's a, it's a concoction of, a, of a, a, a central nervous system. A depolarizing neuron gives rise to a feeling, to a feeling of pain or to a feeling of love or anger or whatever it may be. So what is then a feeling in biophysical terms in the central nervous system? Which bit of the wiring gives rise to... And, I, and I've never seen anyone answer that question in a, in, in a way that makes sense to me. And that's an important question to answer. I think if we want to understand consciousness, that's the only question to answer. Noah Harari's book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, and he's written about this kind of thing on, on various occasions. And he sees biochemistry as an algorithm. And then AI will necessarily be able to um, hack that algorithm and do it better than humans. So there will be AI better at writing music that we appreciate than Mozart ever could, or writing better than Shakespeare ever did, and so on. Because biochemistry is algorithmic, and all you need to do is figure out which bits of the algorithm to play to make us feel good or bad or appreciate things. And it's a, as a biochemist, I find that argument close to irrefutable and not very enjoyable. I don't like the sound of it. That's just my reaction as a human being. You might like the sound of it because that says that AI is, is, is capable of the same kind of uh, emotional feelings about the world as, as, as we are because the whole thing is an algorithm and you can program an algorithm and, and, and there you are. He then has a peculiar final chapter where he talks about consciousness in rather separate terms and he's talking about meditating and so on and getting in touch with his inner conscious i don't meditate i don't know anything about that but he wrote in very different terms about it as if somehow it's a way out of the algorithm um i think in terms of the biochemical feedback loops and so on it is undoubtedly algorithmic but in terms of what we decide to do it can be much more based on an emotion we can just think I don't care. I, I can't resolve this complex situation. I'm going to do that. Uh, and that can be based on, in effect, a different currency, which is the currency of feelings and, and something where we don't have very much personal control over. And then it comes back around to, to, to you and what are you, what are you trying to get at with AI? Do we need to have some system which is capable of overriding uh, a, a rational decision which cannot be made because there's too much conflicting information? by effectively a, an emotional judgmental decision that just says, do this and see what happens. Yeah, that's so, what consciousness is really doing in my view. And that's where I don't think that AI necessarily will become conscious because I think it's the property of life. Could you give advice to young people in general? How can they have a career they can be proud of or have a life they can be proud of? follow what you're interested in. There's a lot of competition, there's a lot of death, symbolically. Um, so who survives? The people who survive are the people who care enough to still do it. And they're very often the people who um, don't worry too much about the future and are able to live in the present. Go to the themes that you're most interested in and try and follow them as well as you can. And, and that tends to pay back in surprising ways. I don't know if you've found this as well, but I, I found that um, people will help you often. If they see some light shining in the eye, they'll, they'll use the network to help you out if you really care. Careful how you define success. Uh... You'll never find happiness in success. I don't think. There's a lovely quote uh, from Robert Louis Stevenson, I think, who said, nothing in life is so disenchanting as attainment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, in, in some sense, the, the, the true definition of success is getting to do today what you really enjoy doing, just uh, what fills you with joy, and that's ultimately success. So success isn't the thing beyond the horizon, the big stat, uh, the, the 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 big trophy, the the financial. I think it's as, it's as close as we can get to happiness. That's not to say you're full of joy all the time, but it's it's as close as we can get to a sustained human happiness is by getting some fulfillment from what you're doing on a daily basis.